Hello, this is ET350, lecture 14. Uh, today we're going to talk about this uh, metric uh, for transformers called percent regulation or percent voltage regulation. Uh, then we're going to have a discussion on three phase transformers. We're going to do a little review on Y delta just so we're up to speed on the square root of three factor. And we're going to look at these different combinations of three phase transformers delta delta, delta y, y delta, and y y. So these are the four main flavors. Um, we'll, we'll look at a special case where the delta y has the input leading. And then uh, we'll look at combinations of how you can parallel tra three phase transformers and what works, what doesn't work. And lastly, we'll look at, well, when you have one that may, you might think doesn't work, uh, is there a situation where the mismatch is useful? And we'll look at that. Okay, so let's begin. So percent uh, regulation or percent voltage regulation is just a metric of performance. And the smaller the number is better. Uh, the, the definition is the V no load minus V load over V load is a, times 100 is your percent voltage regulation. What does that mean? Well, if you have a transformer, the no loaded voltage is the RMS value across the load when nothing is connected. And uh, the V load is the RMS value across the load terminals when the load is connected. So here's a drawing of that. So you then have your output. This could be like your wall power. And you, know, you see 120 volts here. And then let's say you plug in your toaster. And uh, if you saw nearly 120 volts, then you would get like zero for your percent regulation. Well, that's not always true. You know, once you turn on your heaters and your air conditioning, all that stuff, your voltage might droop a little. So maybe it's 120 and it goes down to maybe 119 or 119 point something, 118. And uh, what you would do is you'd punch in this formula and you can see that your percent voltage regulation is a small, typically a small number. And so what's a good number for a, a power transformer? Uh, Something in like the 3% or less range, right? That's kind of what you're looking for. Now, there are examples where the, um, you maybe want a low percent voltage regulation. And one good example that you guys might be familiar with is an AC arc welder. And essentially, that's just a step down transformer, right? When you step it down, you get low voltage and high current. Okay, but you still want enough voltage to strike the arc, right? And so imagine you have no load, you have your stick, right? You're ready to go. Um, you have a high enough voltage, right? And so you can strike the arc, get something going. But then once you're welding, then you want high current and low voltage. So this might have a poor percent voltage regulation, which is okay in this task. But typically for a power transformer, you want to maintain that voltage. You don't want this thing to droop. Okay, just the metric. Okay, let's start a discussion on three-phase transformers. And so you can imagine that a three-phase transformer is going to have three to four input wires and three to four output wires. And I say three to four because you can have that extra neutral, right, depending on if it's a Y or a delta. Uh, we, uh, the standard terminal notation is H is for the high side, X is for the low side. And uh, these three, the voltages between these points here, H1 to H2, H2 to H3, H3 back to H1, are called our line-to-line -line voltages. And our voltages from any of these H points to the neutral is the line-to-neutral voltage. Uh, over here is the same thing, okay? And uh, if you were to inspect a real three-phase transformer, the high side coils are going to be usually thinner. And the reason why is because you're going to have the high voltage but low current. That's the big benefit of sending things up to high voltage anyways. Low current, low heat losses. Now, that means that the low side term coils are probably going to be thicker. And uh, why? Low voltage, high current. So this is uh, where your commercial or residence is going to, going to have that thicker, you know, thicker wire. Okay. All right. So let's do a little review on Y delta. And uh, I drew this little triangle here. So I have A, B, C, and I have V, A, B, V, B, C, V, C, A. These are our line-to-line -line voltages on the outside, right? So these three terminals, A, B, C, would be like these three terminals here. Now the neutral here, I have the neutral drawn in the middle. And you have these three voltages, A, N, V, B, N, V, C, N. Notice I, I'm a little careful about the polarities, negative plus, negative plus, right? A, uh, if I have the first letter, that's the positive. First letter here, that's the positive. Good. And you should see that pattern works for all the six voltages listed. Um, in general, uh, you're going to have the line to line voltages bigger than the line to neutral voltages. And if we assume a positive sequence, and what do I mean by positive sequence? In time, we're talking about phasers and three phase and trig, 
the voltage AB leads BC leads CA or AN leads BN leads CN. That's our definition of uh, positive sequence. And if that's the case, you're going to get a 30 degree lead from AB to AN or B, BC to BN or CA to CN. Okay. And you can see from this phasor uh, vector formula that the magnitude of AB is bigger than the magnitude of AN by our square root of three, which is 1.7. And the phase of AB is going to equal to the phase of AN plus 30. Remember, when you see a phasor equation and you see the angles, you add the angles, but then you do the either multiply or divide for the magnitude. Okay, good review of 250. Okay, let's keep going. So how do I remember that? Well, you can kind of look at a um, phasor diagram, right? Um, if I just look at how I've drawn it, um, this is actually longer, right? It's, it's literally a farther distance, right, than this one. That's kind of the length of AB, just literally how I've drawn it is bigger. If you go, you can, of course, go to your phasor math and phasor diagram and prove all that. But if you remember the factor and you just look at the diagram, that's how typically I remember it, right? Okay, I don't like go back and reprove everything for myself, okay? Although sometimes I do have to. All right, what about the phase? Well, if, you, if we are assuming a positive sequence, you can see that VAB, right? Look at VAB here, is more counterclockwise than VAN. Just draw, look, think of minus the plus as an arrow and AN is minus the plus in, as an arrow. And you can see that it's leading by, VAB is leading by 30 degrees. I mean, at least you should do is you should remember that there's a 30 degrees and yeah, maybe you have to go back to the notes or Google, uh, you know, is it, is it leading or lagging 30? And the key is you have to remember, am I, am I assuming a positive or negative sequence? Because I'm assuming a negative, if I assume a negative sequence, then of course the switch is lagging, okay? But we're gonna assume a positive sequence just so that we have a consistent frame of reference, okay? What about current? So let's say here's a situation where uh, you can look at current. Obviously, you can't look at current in that previous diagram because, well, everything's open circuit. But let's assume we have some circuit elements tied in in a three phase configuration like a delta. And now we can look at line currents to line to line currents. Notice the difference. It sounds very similar, line and line. No, line to line currents are these guys and line current by itself, no double second line are these three out here, IAA, IBB, ICC, right? Okay, what's the relationship between these line to line and line currents? Well, IAA, this, this line here, this line current here is equal to the line to line current times root three with a negative phase of 30 degrees, okay? That means this guy lags this one by 30 degrees, but this one's bigger than this one by a square root of three. Okay, typically you're gonna have access to these line currents. You're not gonna really have access because this would be like inside a motor or something like that. That'd be difficult to get access to these, right? Now, typically you're gonna have access to the line to line voltages, but you're not necessarily gonna have access to the line to neutral voltages unless that neutral is broken out for you, okay? So typically you have access to these voltages and these currents they're kind of not in the same phase, right? Unfortunately, right? See so this current and this voltage match up in phase, and then this voltage and this current match in phase. That's kind of an unfortunate situation, but that's the reality of uh, how things are constructed. Okay, so again, root three is negative, negative phase, as still we're assuming A leads B leads C. And again, how do I remember that? Well, I can look at a branch here and I can see that we have kind of a current divider situation. You can see that this current is coming in and it's just breaking off, right? And that means if it's breaking off and dividing, I would assume that this is a bigger current than this one, okay? And so that's kind of how I remember that the line current is bigger than the line to line by that square root of three factor. What about the phase? Well, you can again, look at your arrow directions, right? And you can see that this arrow is uh, pointed down a little more clockwise than IAB. And so you can see, yeah, okay, negative 30 degrees. So that's kind of a way I, I sneakily remember, but um, yeah, you can always Google it. I'm sure it's, you can find a website that tells you, or you can rederive it for yourself. Okay, let's move on to the three phase transformers. And these are the four flavors that we're gonna talk about. Um, we have YY, delta, delta, Y, delta, and delta Y, okay? 
and I've written them out over here. Okay. So let's look at a delta delta first, just so that we're not bombarded with too much information at once. We're going to regard capital ABC as our primary and lowercase abc as our secondary. We're going to, of course, assume a positive sequence here just so that everything's consistent. And what we're going to also assume is that we are going to construct these things with three single phase transformers with a one to one ratio. So the individual single phase transformers are not going to magnify. There's no 10 to 1, 2 to 1. There's going to be an inherent square root of 3 and a 30 degree phase shift in the way we connect the delta to delta by uh, y delta, all that stuff. Now, if you connect a delta to delta, so I have a, a transform, three phase transformer, essentially three single phase transformers, I'm going to see that the if I look, compare the line to line of the input and output, they will be the same magnitude assuming a one-to-one -one ratio. And the phases will also be the same. And if I look on this table, that is this one here. One-to-one, -one, no phase difference. And delta-delta, I'm going to get three wires and three wires. I know it's hard to see, um, but when I post the notes, you guys will have a, a clear view. Okay. All right. Um, and remember, delta is like this, right? Had kind of the chasing the tail, right? Whereas the y is something like this, okay? Well, the other nice thing about the delta delta is that you can run it in open delta. So that means uh, um, if you lose a phase, you still get robustness. We'll see that in a simulation later. Um, and then if you run it in open delta, you actually get 80, only 86% percent of the power versus two independent transformers. But hey, you still get your three phase at least, right? So it's kind of a nice backup, right? Uh, I believe uh, some ships run a delta delta just for that reason so that you can still run it even if the phase goes down, right? You can actually take a, if you have three individual single phase, you could actually take a phase out and still run, repair or maintain that extra phase and bring it back in. So that's a big benefit of that delta delta. Okay, the other one we'll look at is a delta Y. So the delta Y looks like this one down here. So delta Y, I know it's hard to see, I'm sorry guys. Uh, delta Y, so you have a delta on the input and then, or the primary, and then you have a Y on the secondary. Now on this case, you're gonna have a larger secondary voltage. And you can see that here, the secondary has that square root of three on this side, a larger. So the line to line of the secondary equals the line to line of the primary times root three, okay? And what you're also going to see is that the secondary voltage, if you just look at one phase, is going to lead the, prime, the equivalent phase by 30 degrees. Okay. Um, we will see that we can reconfigure this input to lag, right? So that's not a big deal that this is plus 30. We can always make it minus 30. Um, for Y delta, which is over here, Y delta, okay, so let's look at that. So you can see there's the Y with the extra neutral and the delta. This one has the opposite. It has a smaller secondary voltage than the input and it automatically lags, okay? The input leads or primary leads and the smaller voltage lags. And lastly, we have a YY, which is over here and a YY, as you can see, has again, a one-to-one -one ratio and the same phase, just like the Delta Delta, okay? All right, let's look at the ind four individual and see that what we're saying is true. So here is a delta delta connection. Okay. So what do we have here? We have a single phase transformer. I put the dots for us. So I'm drawing this box, but really just means a single phase transformer. I have capital A, B, C, that's my primary. And remember, this is my line to line. I have A to B plus minus B line to line A, B. Good. I also have, I'm going to put the primary voltage plus or minus. Sometimes these will be the same, sometimes they will be different. Okay. Over here, I have uh, plus or minus Vs, and I have plus or minus V line to line little ab. Now notice in this case, this is equal to this one, and this one is equal to this one by KVL, okay? And since we're using a one-to-one -one transformer, these two voltages will always be the same for our analysis, Vs equals Vp, okay? All right, so by KVL, these two are the same, and these two are the same, and because these two are the same, everything's the same, yay! Right, and so we get the same magnitude, same phase, um, and uh, we have to be aware that the coils must handle the full voltage, more turns in insulation, thinner conductor. So let's go and look at a simulation of this and see if we get that same result. So I'm going to share screen to my 
chord. And so here is a delta delta connection. So you can see that you have A, B, C. Um, B, uh, the end of A attaches to the B, the end of B attaches to the C, and the end of C comes back to the A. You have the same thing going on on the secondary side. I'm going to run this. Okay. And uh, now you can see all the current flowing, all the three phase current in all its full glory. Okay. Um, here's your three phase on the primary, here's your three phase on the secondary, and what I'm plotting, if you can see here, is the voltage of the AB phase, capital and lower phase. And if you see it on here, you notice there's no difference. They're one-to-one. -one. They're both the same amplitude in phase, no shift, everything. And here's the other cool thing. I can lose a phase. I can take out this first phase here by opening the switch. And look at that, you still get three phase currents going through here, doesn't even hardly skip the heartbeat. Um, pretty cool that this still works in a open delta configuration here, right? Okay, so this is our delta delta connection. Same magnitude, same phase, primary and secondary. Of course, assuming one to one. If I click this, you can see I've set the ratio to one. Okay, we'll stop that and then go back to the document. All right, so we have our delta delta. Let's go to the next one. So the next one here is going to be the delta y. So in the delta y, what are we saying? We're going to say we have a larger secondary, but let's just double check how we have it connected. So I have this exactly the same as my original one as the delta delta, but now I'm connecting it differently. So this is delta, this is the same, but now the outside of the y, and let's double check. A, B, C independent, and I've connected the other side of the transformer of these single phase transformers to a common neutral. Okay, so this will give me four wires if I wanted. Okay, I don't have to, but I could have four wires if I wanted to. Okay, so if I look at this to this, this is our line to line voltages, both line to line voltages. By KVL, these two are the same, right? VL, AB equals VP. But look at this one. I have a line to line voltage here, and I have a line to neutral voltage there. And we know from our review that a line to line voltage in terms of magnitude is square root of three bigger than the line to neutral voltage. Okay. We also know that the line to line voltage is equal to the line to neutral voltage plus 30 degrees. Okay. And that's from our review. Good. So because Vs is the same as Vp, the magnitude of the secondary is equal to the square root of three times the magnitude of the primary. And so we get a natural amplification of this just by the way we connected it. Nothing to do with the single phase transformer, okay? Okay, and again, we see that the phase has an increase. So the secondary actually has an increase in phase. So what do we have here? Angle of Vs is the same as the angle of Vp, which is the same as the angle of V. Uh, line to line capital AB, yep, we get an increase in phase on the secondary. So again, let's go to our simulation and see if that uh, result comes true. So I'm gonna share. So let's go to the next simulation here, and that's this guy. And uh, on this, we have a delta to Y three phase transformer. So delta on the left, Y on the right. And uh, you can, again, still see the primary and secondary three-phase voltages. And again, I'm still plotting the input and output. And if you look here at, the, uh, at this plot where I plotted both the phase, notice that the secondary leads, the red one here leads, and it has a larger magnitude by square root of three, 1.7. And so um, I hope this is convincing you that our analysis was correct. Okay, so here and here. Okay, so what happens if I open this? Does it break? Mm, it's not as happy. Look at that. Look at our three phase voltage. We lose our nice 120 offset. Okay, so not so robust, not so robust to a break in your, your phase here. Okay, we'll stop that. And that. Okay, let's go to the next one. So the next one here is a y to delta, y to delta. So y delta, we are here. And this time the left side is the y, the right side is the delta. And on a y delta, what do we have? We have um, 
the VLLA B this time is the square root of three times VP by our Y delta uh, review. And this is leading this by 30 degrees, okay? Now on this side, since we have the delta, these two are the same, right, by KBL, okay? And again, we still have the individual VPVS, a one-to-one -one transformative problem, okay? Um, what is the consequence of this? Well, the consequence is the magnitude of the secondary is equal to one over root three times the magnitude of the primary, right? Because VS is the same as VP, I got to bring that root three over, that goes there, good. And what about the phase? Well, the phase of this is equal to the phase of, of that. And so I got to bring that 30 on the other side, I get a minus. So the phase of the secondary lags the phase of the primary by 30 degrees. Okay, and this is for a y to delta. Okay, so let's again go to the simulation and see what we get. So we go here, we go to the next one. And so in this case, this is a y to delta. And uh, I'm gonna run this. And again, three phase, yay, everything's happy. And if I look at the secondary, the secondary here, again, yep, lags. This time the red is lagging behind and it is less by a square root of three. So it's smaller and lagging. Good. So this again is consistent with our uh, analysis. Good. And let's again, let's just pop this switch and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Oh, it just doesn't like that. It doesn't get to maintain that nice three phase uh, uh, 120 degree offset behavior. So not so good. That delta delta is robust. Okay. So we'll stop that and stop share. All right, so let's go to the next one. The next one is a y, y. So on the y, y, both sides are now y. Both sides have this square root of three and the 30 degrees, right? Okay, so the left side, VLAB is a square root of three bigger than VP, and this has a 30 degree uh, increase in phase in this one. Same with over here. This, this little AB has a square root of three big, uh, bigger difference in magnitude and leading by 30. But what happens is the root threes and the thirties actually cancel. So if I follow this, this VS is the same as VP. If I bring this one over root three, that's gonna cancel with this numerator root three and I'm just get the same. Over here, since VS and VP are the same and I bring this negative 30 over, if I bring that over, I get negative 30, positive 30, I get the same phase. So YY has the same magnitude and phase on the primary and secondary. And again, we can go and check the simulation to see if that's working out. So we go over here, go to the next one. This is a YY, run this guy, see the nice three phase again. And yes, both are right on top of each other. The uh, secondary and primary phases are right on top. Same magnitude, same phase, locked in. Again, we can pop this little switch to see if we get, uh, if we can still get a three phase recovered. Nope, loses that, look, loses the 120 offset, okay. Good. Okay, so let's go to the next one. All right, now in a standard three phase connections, if you have Y, Y or Delta, Delta, we already showed ourselves that the high side are in phase with the low side. The H's and the X's are in phase, no problem. Same magnitude, assuming a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, if you have the non-one-to-one -one ratio, of course, you're gonna have a different magnitude, but no problems here. Now, if you're using a Delta Y or Y Delta, what they do in industry is that they connect the H's in such a way to always lead the X1 and X2, okay? Now that's okay for the Y delta, right? That's okay, because this already has a situation where the output secondary lags the input or this one leads, right? But what about for the delta Y, right? What about this one? Because remember inherently, the secondary leads the input. We want it, what, how do we connect it the other way? We need some extra um, consideration, right? Um, so how can we do that? Well, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. So what we can do is this. If you recall, a positive sequence has A leading B leading C, and we're connecting the end of the, second, of the first transformer to B, and the end of the B transformer to C, and the end of the C transformer back to A. Well, all we gotta do is switch that connect the end of the A transformer to C, and then the C to the uh, end of the C to the B, and then the end of the B to back to A, that would do, uh, that would uh, solve our problem uh, of switching the sequence, right? Okay, 
And so what you would have is something like this, right? The output is the same, but now the end of the A goes to C, the end of the C goes to B, and the end of the B goes back to A. So this here is the way we could connect a delta Y in such a way that even though ABC itself and little a, B, and C of itself is leading, you're gonna get um, kind of a phase sequence change here and have the H's always leading the X's, if that makes sense, okay? All right, and so just to convince ourselves that this is true, um, we could look at, uh, what would we have here? We'd have VP here, okay? And we would say VAB is equal to the magnitude of VP. Let's see, let's just double check that. Uh, v L L A B, and we have V P, which is here to here. Okay, is that right? Here to here. And then we would have actually a 60 degree phase change, right? So this would be a positive 60 degree. So it would be the V L L A B. So that's this voltage here relative to this uh, V peak would be a 60 degree phase change. And then on the right side here, you'd have Vs, which is this guy here. Um, and that's the same thing, the root three difference. And then this is still 30 degrees greater than this because it's still Y. But when I do this calculation here, what do I have? I have VLAB here equals Vs, but then Vs is the same as Vp. So this is a minus 60 here. So minus 60 plus 30 is negative 30. We get this lag again, okay? So that's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. Let's go and double check the simulation and see if we get that same result. So share here. Okay, so this is a delta Y where X is leading. And let's double check. So we have a delta here. Notice I have this voltage here going, or sorry, this terminal here going to the C, C going to the B, and then the end of the B going back to the A. And if I monitor this voltage here, this uh, AB voltage, I can see that it is leading X, okay? Notice the green line is leading the red uh, secondary, okay? So still a delta Y, still the magnitude of the secondary is bigger than the magnitude of the primary, but it is now leading. That's kind of nice. So let's hit the stop for that. All right. Okay, so let's go back. Or, uh, and then let's check out these combination of three phase trans three phase parallel transformer. So what does that mean? That means I'll have a three phase coming in and I'll have a you know a transformer, whether it's a delta y or y delta, and then maybe I'll have another delta y. And so they'll go in here and then they'll go, you know, down here like this. And then I can take these and then maybe put them together, right? One, two, three, and then put them back together. And why would you want to do this? Well, we kind of talked about it briefly, but this can this allows you to kind of load share, right? Um, you can have uh, you can take a transformer out and maintain one, and then like just run it at lower duty, right? So maybe you might have some switches here, okay? Now there's some combinations that are going to work and some combinations that are not going to work. Obviously, if you get the magnitudes and phases wrong, you're going to have circulating currents and you're going to damage each other. But if you have the same ratios and everything matched, it's easy. Okay, so these are some combinations that work. If you have a delta, 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 that's fine. Y, 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 that's fine. Okay, uh, you can even mix delta, delta, and Y, Y. You can mix a delta, Y, and delta, Y, just like here, Y, delta, Y, delta. And you can even mix a delta, Y, and a Y, delta, because the 30 degrees will cancel each other's phase shift, right? So that would be nice. These all will work. Now, what won't work is a delta, delta, and delta, Y, and all these delta y, delta, delta, y, delta, y, y, and y, 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 delta, these are not going to work because you can't inherently cancel or fix the phase shift, even though this one you can, right? So you can do the math and figure out why these wouldn't work, but I think you can readily see it that this is going to have no phase shift between the input, but this is going to have a 30 degree plus or minus phase shift, right? Same with all, all four of these. Now, is there a situation where these type of transformers could be useful? And yes, there is. So a situation where that could be useful is when you're trying to input into a VFD. And if you recall a VFD, 
what do you have here? A VFD, you have a three-phase rectifier, you have a DC bus, and then you have a three-phase inverter, right? And then this, this is you know attached to a motor of some sort, right? And this is your three phase coming in. Okay. Now, if you recall from our from our your previous classes, the three phase rectifier, right, is is nice. It it has the six it has the six uh, pulses, right? And what it does are the six diodes, and it chops it up, and uh, um, then you get your essentially rectified nice DC bus. But the pro, uh, but then you can add a capacitor and smooth it out. Now these ripples, these ripples are going to be six to every period. But can we add two together and get 12 pulses, right? And uh, we're gonna, we can utilize this 30 degree offset by using a Y, Y, Y delta, right? Now, the thing is you gotta be careful because the Y delta, you're gonna have to uh, get that ratio to match with the square root of three from, right? Because uh, you're, you're getting this mismatch and let's double check, right? So if I go back to that page right here, what does a Y delta do? So Y delta has a smaller secondary. So I'm gonna to have to in, change the individual single phase transformers to have an extra square root of three to, to account for that loss of a square root of three. But I will get that natural 30 degree phase shift. And what I'll see is instead of the nice, or instead of the maybe not as ideal six pulse rectifier here, where this is your rectified output, I would get something like this and I get a 12 pulse rectifier. So I'd get my original three and then I would have this extra 30 degree phase shifted one and I would get this nice 12 pulse rectified output, everything smoother, maybe less harmonics, um, less issues with uh, a smoother out, um, output. And then the capacitor doesn't have to work as hard, okay? So a lot of harmonic benefits to uh, having a 12 pulse rectifier. Now I built a simulation that combines, it's a little bit overwhelming maybe, but hopefully you enjoy it. So let's go share the screen. Okay, so let's go to this last one. This one is a monster. This is a monster. And so I'll try to parse out what's going on. You got your three phase input and I have a uh, YY here. Notice the common neutral, common neutral is YY. And I have a Y delta, and I have the square to three ratio in the single phase to compensate. Look at that, I put that 1.7 in there. Whereas here, I have just a one to one ratio, okay? Um, I have them both going to a three phase rectifier here, and I've connected them in parallel. Notice the top branch of this is connected to the top branch of this, and I have my load here. And the bottom branch of, of this is connected to the bottom branch of this. So both of these three-phase rectifiers or these six-pulse rectifiers are in parallel. And you can see here that the, um, that the voltage, I'm actually monitoring this AB on the YY and this AB on the, on the Y delta. And you can see there's a 30-degree phase shift, right? And uh, if you look over here, these are plotting all the voltages, A, B, C on this Y, Y, A, B, C on this Y delta, and the voltage across the load. And you can see that the voltage across the load would be smoother than if you just had um, a single three phase inverter or six pulse inverter, okay? You also can see that there's a, that the voltage across the load is actually less than the peaks of the individual voltages. And I believe that's being eaten up from the diodes, right? The diodes have a voltage drop across. Okay, so this is an example of a 12 pulse inverter using a combination of YY and Y delta, okay? Um, I could even hook up, I even added this feature to hook up um, these uh, inverters, or sorry, these rectifiers in series. So I just need to click these up here. And what you can see here is that, I know the noise, but now the load, rectified voltage jumps up and doubles. And so you can see that there, so that's nice. So you can connect in series and parallel, that's another benefit of having this. And it still has that 12 pulse, uh, 30 degrees offset, okay? All right, I uh, hope this uh, lecture was useful to you guys and you learned something. All right, I'll see you guys in class. Have a great, great day.